Welcome back, my Gargamels. To Smurf hunting. Now I'm just joking. We're balloon hunting today, man. We're talking about the super monkey right here. So I felt like the best way to understand the super monkey and all of his popping power is actually with a table. So I'm going to be showing you guys a table of, of all the different amounts of pops that we can do. Um... In this table, what you're going to see is the type of Super Monkey, the cost of that Super Monkey, the amount of pops that I got in this test that I did, and then the pop-to-cost ratio, which is like an efficiency rating, higher is better. So, uh, before I actually go over all of the different numbers over there, I just wanted to talk about why I did that for Super Monkey specifically. I feel like Super Monkeys are one of those towers where, like, they don't really do anything too fancy or special, they just do pops. Like, that is their job. If you want them to do things, you upgrade them higher. Like, that's what they do. So, uh, we really don't even need to talk too much about the different upgrades themselves, it's just how good they are, basically. So that's why I'm going to keep this graph here for at least a little while, and I'm eventually just going to get rid of it so we can uh, talk about each of these different upgrades. But going over all of them fairly fairly quickly here, we, get, we can see that our uh, pop-to-cost ratio for the, the lower levels is about 1 to 1. Uh, so... The, the like zero zero super monkey, the one zero super monkey, they're pretty weak. But getting up to that plasma, you can see the huge jump in popping power that we get, and that that was like understood. But now we could finally see it in numbers form. Getting the plasma is key here, guys. Going to give you so many more pops. Be super duper helpful against those mob class balloons and everything. They're just going to be a solid tower for us. Plus, I feel like if I actually try and like understand like how many pops I'm doing when I'm trying to like you know, show you guys what the heck's going on over here. It's it's not easy to do, you know? So, they just shoot too friggin' fast. It's just like, oh my god, what is he doing over here? It doesn't even make sense. Especially when these higher class balloons and everything, there's just no way we can actually see what the, each plasma blast does or even how fast he shoots. So, um... Yeah, it gets really goofy. But then moving on, we've got the, uh, the two third tier super monkeys that are fairly common. We've got the Sun God, the 3-0, which is uh, about a 3.6, one of the best in the game. And then the 2-3-0, which is a plasma robo monkey right here at 3.4. Now one thing you're noticing is that I, I've gotten plasma for almost every single one of my super monkeys. Basically, I get to Plasma, then I start deciding what other upgrades I want to get. Whether it's a Robo Monkey upgrade, just going up to the Sun God, or starting to get the Dark Knight over here. I, any which way you want to go, I always get the Plasma first. Now, I've done some tests in the past with my 5th tier Super Monkey videos, and basically what I found out was that Plasma is basically a necessity. Alright, Plasma is like your just go-to thing. You need the Plasma to be powerful. If you go with any other upgrades in combination, like if you go for like a Dark Champion with extra range, he's going to be terrible. And uh, if you go for like a Robo, or if you go for a Robo Monkey with, with Knockback, he's pretty bad as well. He just doesn't do enough popping power. He's like slightly better against the balloons to like knock him back for a little bit, but not enough to make up for the Plasma damage that we can do. Moving on, though, we've got the 240. So this is the technological tear. Now, i got to point out that I did not use my ability while doing this test because that would have totally misconstrued the data and made it look all weird and goofy and almost looked like this guy is unbelievably amazing. Because what I did was I sent out basically infinite balloons in my test. Uh, but By the way, if you guys were just curious how I did my test, I actually had all of the super monkeys on the screen all at the same time. Um, I upgraded them all up differently. I had the regular, you know, the plasma, the... Uh, you know, Dark Knight over here, the Dark Champion, the the Legend of the Knight over here. You know, I had all, I had all these guys, basically. And uh, then what I did was I sent out, and I even, uh, you know, I, I had all of them. And then I sent out uh, a crap ton of these things. Just a crap ton. Actually, what I did was I, I sent them out in a spacing of one. And I sent out one... Let's make this zero. I made this zero, just so you guys understand that it's a fairly accurate test over here. I made it zero so I couldn't attack for a little while. I sent out more, and then I sent out more, and then I sent out more, and I was like, okay, we're really going to overflow this this screen with the freaking balloons. Then as soon as everybody could start hitting, I was like, okay, now we're going to give ourselves that nine bajillion lives here. Once I did that, then everybody started attacking. So I did do it correctly in my, uh, my original test over here, but this is just like a makeshift show-off test type deal. 
And uh, uh, I let it run for a pretty long time. And eventually, I uh, I just turned it off when I felt like I've, I've done a good enough job. I didn't do just 999. I just turned it off when I felt like I did a good enough job over here. So you can't really compare this to any other tax shooter or boomerang or, or any other tests that I've done before. Just compare the super monkeys against other super monkeys. Once I felt like I had enough, I looked at their pop count, and that's how I did my test. Now, the most interesting one to me was actually that the anti-balloon was the strongest super monkey. Uh, I did have them up to 250, not just the 050, though. And the anti-balloon was, uh, uh, also did not use his ability. So having a 4.3 popped cost ratio over here was actually really freaking solid. Um, not that much better than a Sun God or a Robo Monkey, just slightly better, but it definitely really helps me out in understanding how good this guy is. One of the ones that were actually the worst, which is, can he also misconstrued, is the, uh, the, the bottom path, uh, guys. We had the, uh, uh, the Dark Champion, the Dark Knight, and uh, the Legend of the Knight over here all had fairly low pop count ratios. Like, what's what's up with that? Pop to cost ratio. Well, why are they so bad? Well, because they do Moab bonus damage over here, and I did not send out any Moabs in my testing. I just sent out the regular invisible balloons over here, which uh, are not considered Moabs, and we don't get the bonus damage for those guys. So even though they may seem a little bit worse in this test, they're actually not as bad as they seem. They're actually pretty reasonably powerful, especially if you put them up in the front and put them on strong. So that's my testing here, guys. Now let's talk about each of these individual towers and how their upgrades work. And I'm not going to go into too much detail because they are fairly self-explanatory, I guess. Uh, one weird thing is that any uh, zero, 0 Super Monkey can actually pop frozen balloons. So we normally think, oh, we need, you know, Laser Blast pop frozen balloons. Not anymore, man. Zero, 0 You can take that thing down already. He does one balloon per pop, or one shot per pop. He attacks pretty fast. He's pretty cool. He's good against Moabs and stuff like that. Good against Ceramic, surprisingly. Just sending out, like, one single Ceramic. We can see how well this guy just... Shoots 10 shots, takes this thing down to balloons, and then of course we can clean up some of the loots inside as well. So he's a solid tower. He's actually pretty reasonably priced as well, so even getting like an early super monkey is not that bad. Which is, on the contrary, some of the other sort of stronger towers over here that's, that cost quite a bit of money. Or the super monkey BT-5, which was like pretty bad, until you got him up to at least plasma, or all the way up to third tiers, or even fourth tiers in, in uh, BT-5. Laser Blast, as you can tell, it just doubles our popping power from 1 to 2, so, like, it's decent and everything, but it's nothing insane here. We're just doing double the popping power, but it actually does not help us out against Moab-class balloons very much. It's gonna make it, uh, not really help out that much. Plasma Blast, though, this is where it gets way better, man. This guy is a solid freaking tower. Now we can take down Bob's like it's our freaking job. We can take down the Bloons like it's our job over here. And this guy is just awesome. He's a little pricey, though. You gotta say that. He is, he is pretty pricey. He's worth spending $4,000 plus just to buy the Plasma over here. Um, spending that much money, he better be worth it. You know, it's not easy to afford that much money by the time we actually need it. Moving up to the Sun Avatar up in here. This guy is like the balloon popping power master. But the weirdest thing for me was that the 2 3 Robo Monkey, which I normally think of as better against Moab class balloons, really was not that much worse at popping balloons for his cost. Because he costs a lot less. Uh, you compare this guy, you know, we can get just a quick plasma, and then the Robo Monkey is only 7650. This guy is going to cost a whopping 17 grand to get up to a Sun God here. Uh, 17 grand plus, depending on uh, what difficulty you're playing on. And to me, that makes a pretty drastic difference. Uh, being able to afford this guy sort of early on in the game, and being able to do blue damage and uh, pop and power, like, it just seems like the Robo Monkey is like almost the way to go in most situations. If you want to, just put two of these guys down, you know? Like, as long as you don't, you're not limited on space, it seems like Robo Monkeys may be a little bit better than the Sun Gods. But, to each their own. However you guys want to do it. Now, here is where it gets really crazy, guys. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but what I will say is that I don't fully understand the temple still. Alright, I'm going to... I'm gonna. I read... I don't have it up on my screen right now, but there were some wonderful people on Reddit that... Uh, uh, 
I gotta give a shout out to. I don't even know their name. I'll, I should Google it right now. Reddit BTD6 Temple something. Hopefully that pops up over here. Uh, we've got. All right, here we go. By Generation3529, thank you. Uh, uh, you, you did a great job here, man. I did read through his entire explanation of uh, what he thinks the Max Temple actually is and how the Max Temple is actually not possible. And I think he's right about just about everything, but it seems to me, to me, that you may not want to get three different paths upgraded. You may only want to get two paths upgraded, and it may be stronger. It's very hard to test it out, but from my minor testing that I did, it seemed like two paths were actually better than three, which is just really goofy to understand. Could be something to do with lag, could be something to do with wrong uh, real pop counts over here for our sun god. I don't really know what the deal is, but to me, it seems like two paths is different than three paths, and two paths could be better. So, what do I mean by that? Oh my god, the temple is confusing. Nijiki, we made it unbelievably confusing for us. So, uh, you know, take everything that I say with a grain of salt. Yeah, maybe even a giant pile of salt over here, man. Put those salt, put that salt in the wounds. Let that fester for a little while and burn down to your bone right there, because that's what we got going on right now, guys. It sucks. Temple is confusing, but what I can show you guys is basically how to get a really strong temple. Um, and that's not that hard to do. But getting, like, the max temple or getting the best temple is, like, not really something I can explain because it's oh, not even possible. That's the weird thing. It's not even possible to get a max temple. So moving up to a sun temple. What you can do is you can get three out of the four different types of towers in here um, put into him. So you can pick between primaries, militaries, magics, and support, put three different tower types inside of him, put $50,000 of each of those types, and upgrade it. So what I'm going to do is I'm only going to do um, I'm going to do what what they said is supposed to be the max, all right, or the the max ish that you can get. We're going to do uh, two two uh, we're gonna put fifty thousand dollars of primaries. We're going to put fifty thousand dollars of militaries. I'm going to overkill it a little bit, but just going with the flying fortress because it's easy. And then for magic monkeys, I'm going to again overkill it a little bit just by going for the anti blue. So this is fifty thousand dollars of each one of the primaries, militaries, and magic monkeys. Once we get up to the uh, sun temple over here, we're sh we should be really freaking strong. That's basically what we got. We got the two planes rolling around us. We've got the little baby uh, sun avatars down here. We're going to be able to shoot blades, boomerangs. Um, have the planes, have the sun gods, and then also uh, have like a special magic attack that can send Moabs backwards. So if we sent out, I don't know, let's send out uh, uh, a bad balloon here. I just see this guy kind of go to town on this thing. You see the Spectres are already doing a good amount of damage and everything. Um, I actually kind of wanted to gauge how good we can do. And now DDTs are going to sneak through because I don't have automatic camera detection here, guys. But we're going to see where we can pop the Zoma Gods inside, or at least where we pop the Bad Balloon. So here we go, yeah. This is, this is actually going to work out really, really well. Popping the Zomagod right there, and it looks like we pop everything, like, right over here. Now, this is with the three types of monkeys. Keep that in mind. Three types of monkeys. If we go up to a Sun God, then we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to put three types of these monkeys in here, and because we want to get this guy maxed out for power, we're going to put uh, more magic in. We're going to put more military in. $50,000 of that, and then $50,000 of primaries. Sadly, there's no... Um, there's no tower that equals $50,000 just right from the get-go for primary, so you just have to buy a couple extra upgrades in here just to confirm that you're going to get it. Then we can get the true sun god right here. All right. Now, when we send out... Now, when we just, like, look at him, first of all, we got the, the four planes flying around him. We've got the uh, sun avatars popping out. We've got the three different attacks still, the boomerangs, the blades. We've got the uh, extra magic attack over here. So, all that is wonderful. If I send out, let's try ten bad balloons here. It's going to be really freaking strong, I should add. DDTs will sneak through. I don't have the cam detection currently. That's something to note for sure. I don't have the super range either. I did not buy the range for any of my temples. We can see this guy finally going to town. I could get the knockback and stuff like that to make him even more powerful, but I actually don't want to. Where are these balloons going to pop? Oh, we're sending them all back. So I think the furthest balloon got to right around here. 
gonna be hard to tell. Uh, maybe I'll do another test over here. Let's do like a uh, hundred bad balloons. Two hundred bad balloons. Maybe I should do super range. To the super range now, and let's send them out over here, baby. And let's see what we can do now. Let's see where a hundred bad balloons get to. Um, I don't know. Should I just add the monkey village in? No, let's not add the monkey village in. We'll just let the DDT sneak through. It doesn't matter all that much, anyways. But you can see we're taking down the bad balloon uh, like a freaking beast over here, man. 100 bad balloons, no big deal. Balloons inside, bubs getting sent back and everything. Um, we're just a powerhouse overall. We've got the blade shooting now. We've got that boomerang happening. This is what a good temple is. Now, uh, so hard to freaking see where the balloons end up getting popped. But again, very similar spot, like right around here. Probably going to be the same thing against the other balloons up in here, though. So, that's the only thing that I wanted to do for this this temple. What we can do is we can look at the pop count. We've got 2,479,000... No, 24,796,788. Okay. I probably won't remember that number. But let's do this guy again. But this time, we're going to end up just doing primaries and magic. Or no, primaries and military. So, we're going to do the cannon. Cannon. We're gonna do a military up in here. Up to a uh, $50,000. Doesn't matter what the heck you buy in $50,000. We're gonna get this guy up to a delicious sun temple right here. We can do one bad balloon really quick. And uh, see where this guy gets popped. Again, we got the specter. Now we've got the missile coming out. That's probably helpful, hopefully. I, I don't know. Gotta be. And let's see where this guy gets popped. Actually looks like very similar to the other one, I think. Actually could be slightly less powerful. <gasps> oh, and it is. It's slightly less powerful. Okay, good. So now that actually, that unconfirms what I thought about this. Three, three upgrades seems to be more powerful. Wonderful. But we just need to go a little bit further, man. We want to check with the fifth here, too. So we'll do one of these guys. We'll do one of these guys. We'll do an, uh, one more of these monkey aces right here up to a wonderful flying fortress. We need a true sun god right here. We're going to send out uh, we do 10 bad balloons the first time with no extra range upgrades. See this guy go to town. See if he does end up doing any extra damage against these guys or if we're just completely idiots. But last time we popped them right around here. See if they get to about the same spot or even further. Oh! Very close, man. About the same spot as before. Kind of what we're expecting. Let's do 100 now with the super range this time. So we'll do 100 bad balloons. And this is going to be like the last test I do for my temple. But basically, just understand that what you need to do is put $50,000 of primary, $50,000 of military, and then if you want to, put $50,000 of magic or support. Either which way, whatever you're feeling like, man, just just do it. it it's, it's cool. It's fun. It's, it's, a, it's a good guy to use. So we're taking these guys down pretty gosh darn fast over here. Um, I believe that this is very similar to where we popped it last time. But it looks like it's getting just a little bit further. So I will say that you probably should do the three paths over here, not just the two paths, even though they're very, very similar. Just spend that few extra hundred, few extra $50,000. Well, actually, it's going to be a whopping $100,000. Spend that extra hundred, uh, whopping hundred thousand dollars to make this guy better. But again, we got twenty-five million, two hundred fifty-one thousand, one hundred seventy-six balloons because we popped them all. All right, we're done. That's it. Temple, get out of here. Again, confusing as crap, but do what you want, man. Get those guys, and you're gonna be happy. Oh, so happy. Now for the rest of these, well, range, okay, epic range. All right, Robo Monkey. All right, well, we we know what this guy does. Um, actually, does he pop lead balloons? That's a good question. In this game, he does not! <gasps> he does not pop lead balloons! One thing that I should say, though, is that a lot of these guys actually can't pop purple balloons because it's considered a plasma attack. Sun gods can pop purple balloons. Uh, Robo plasmas, regular plasmas can't. It's odd because a regular super monkey can, but a laser blast can't. Like, it's just like the, the weirdness of the different upgrade combinations that actually happen over here is sort of goofy. Uh. But Robo Monkeys are a solid freaking tower. We get double Plasma Blast, which is helping out a bunch against Bug Blast Balloons and the regular Balloons. And then going up to Attack Terror, we do get more popping power uh, in addition to being able to have our ability right here. So, as I was saying earlier, when I was doing my my 
table, I did not use the ability while doing that test, but if I did, we'd add even more popping power to our agenda over here and actually make him slightly better than what we saw on the table. Anti-Balloon, exact same thing, man. Not only is he the best... Oh my god, just look at his arms. like Mrrr. It looks like freaking Beastly uh, Blastoise or something like that right now. Beastly Blastoise Mega Cannons. He just looks kind of stupid, actually. Like, his arms should not bend that way. But anyway, same thing with this guy. Not only was he the best Super Monkey uh, pop to cost ratio already, he's already... He's... he's, he's also got its ability, which is amazing, man. It can take down infinite balloons in its range, and it also does 3,000 damage, I believe 3,000 damage to each one of the balloons, which is just freaking insane. I should mention that I did not include the Temple or the Sun God in my tests, mostly because you can upgrade them in different ways, and we just know that they're already going to be the most effective. I don't even need numbers for that. They will be the most effective by far, okay? Trust me on that. If you put the right upgrades in there, put the right towers in there, you're going to be really freaking happy with the result. Um, moving on, we've got the knockback, which you knock balloons back, man. It's it's exactly what it sounds like. Push them back a little bit. If you get the plasma and stuff like that, helps out even more. Works especially good against ceramic balloons and stuff like that, but does not affect Moab class balloons. Moabs are not going to be affected by this thing at all, which is a little bit sad, but it kind of makes sense for only a $2,000 upgrade up in here. Uh, Ultra Vision gives us camera detection, so, uh, yeah, I mean, that helps out a little bit, giving the Super Monkey automatic camera detection over here, and a smidge, a smidge, a little, a little smidge of increased range over here. Just, just so you guys can see it in action one more time, go look at this, and then look at the Ultra Vision range. Ooh, like 3% more or something like that. It's like, not much. Moving up to the Dark Knight, now we've got extra Moab damage. So just to compare this guy... What we can do is we can put a Plasma Monkey right here and a Dark Knight Plasma Monkey. Keep in mind, we spent a lot more money on this guy, you know, an extra five grand or so. But uh, even if I did like something like doubling this guy, let's compare it for some Moab class balloons. So we're just going to do Moabs. We're going to put these guys both on strong. So all I want to do is hit these Moab class balloons. Let them go to town for a little bit. I'll do like a hundred more just to make sure we're already always attacking. In fact, maybe we're just on last. We're attacking mobs up in here, man. We'll clear out the balloons in just a second over here, and then we're going to look at the pop counts really quick and just see where we're at. All right. So we got 13,000. We've got 4,228. So even if we double this guy, he's still not as good as this guy right here. And the only reason I'm talking about doubling it is because the price difference. 6,000 to almost 12,000. So you can tell this guy's just really solid against the mob class balloons. You do want to get this guy up to at least third tier, but Dark Champion actually can be really effective as well. Um... Even for the uh, the amount of money that you're spending on him, he's actually more effective as a 204 than a 203. Even for the ridiculous sixty thousand dollars that you're spending on this guy. Um, again, he does more mob uh, popping power. He's just great against oh my gods and stuff like that. Like he just he demolishes these, these things like it's his freaking job, man. That's all he does. He just does amazing damage. To this thing. The only weakness he has is he doesn't have a lot of range. So. Um, I don't know. It, it's weird because he's got the knockback ability, which is good against the balloons, but he's actually not meant to pop balloons. He's meant to pop the Moab class balloons. So he's just got, like, two different, like, areas of expertise, which ends up being a little bit on the weird side, I guess. So, I don't know. Do whatever you want, man, but it's just a little bit weird to hear about that. But you can see we're taking down, like, Zoma God and stuff like that. Like, look at the amount, insane amount of pop power we got. 150,000 already. And then we're not bad against the balloons at all. We still slice through these mofos right here. And then moving up, we've got the Legend of the Night, which you guys have probably seen before in my fifth tier video. But if you haven't, basically what he does is he's uh, slightly stronger than the fourth tier, but not for the price that you spend on him. So, uh, what I should say is that whenever you get an upgrade, you're, you're getting more popping power on top of an ability. So for Robo Monkey to attack Terror, we're getting more popping power and an ability. The anti we're getting more popping power and an extra strong ability. Same thing with this guy right here. Every single upgrade in the pathway over here, whether you're getting the Dark Knight, the uh, Dark Champion, or all the way up to the Legend of the Knight, they're all going to have extra popping power over here. But the difference is, is this guy gets a special little ability. 
And what his ability does is it makes it so you can't lose lives for a small amount of time. Uh, the first time you leak lives, you will not leak lives, and instead they will just bloop, disappear into nothingness. So just to prove this, just to show it off really quick, we can send out uh, some DDTs over here. Oh, man, we're too strong. We'll have to send out a lot of DDTs, I guess. Send out like 500 DDTs right there, man. So because these guys have ultra vision, they automatically get that camera detection as well. So that's why we can pop DDTs uh, automatically over here. But now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the very back of the map over here. We're going to see something activate in just a second here. We're going to go... And we just slurp up in... I believe it's infinite bloods, no matter how many bloods are going through over here, until it wears off. And it wears off just right there, guys. And we still would lose or lose lives over here. Just kind of interesting to see how much popping power we do by... They don't even like actually count as popping power. That's the weird thing. They just disappear. You know, they're not actually getting popped. They're just disappearing. So I believe we don't get any money for those things either. We just get extra death points. You know, we just we don't die. So all in all, the Super Monkey, a surprisingly easy tower to understand over overall, except for the the temple. The, the temple is just the goofiest mofo in the entire world. They spent like 20 minutes talking about that guy. I didn't spend very much time talking about any of the other super monkeys. Hopefully the table helped you guys out in understanding which super monkey you should go for in most situations. Um, I would say do whatever you want, man. That's how Ninja Kiwi designed it. Do whatever uh, whatever you want as long as you're spending money on a super monkey. He is going to be strong. Uh, make sure you just position him right. Put him in a spot where he can attack in multiple areas uh, without too many issues. And if you're going to end up upgrading his range, make sure you put him in a spot where the range is going to help him out when you finally upgrade it, not just where he is right now. Because the range increase is going to be pretty beastly right here. You want to make sure you get every bit of pop power that you can out of this guy. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you press that like button. If I messed anything up or if I'm just an idiot, especially about the temple, feel free to yell at me in the comments below. But honestly, I prefer if you didn't. It's just, it's too complicated. And uh, uh, I think we're doing a good enough job here not getting a max temple, but just getting a decent enough temple. Oh, you know what? Last thing I got to say. I didn't really talk about the support monkeys inside of a temple over here. I did that in my temple video, but what he does is upgrading him up to a temple with fifty thousand dollars of of stuff in here makes everything forty or twenty percent cheaper. Doing it again will make him forty percent cheaper, uh, and it goes all the way up to uh, uh, third and fourth tier and fifth tier towers as well. So it's not just those third tier towers that are cheaper. It's going to be all the way up. So it's kind of nice, you know? Sadly, if you do end up temple sacrificing your son, God, it does disappear, and he's not going to be very strong at all. So, uh, please keep that in mind as well. Don't accidentally slurp up your temples like that. Um, yes, that's all I got for you guys today. If you enjoyed, press that like button for me. Subscribe if you haven't, and of course, have a super duper delicious day.